All right, today I'd like to talk a little bit about how bones break and how they repair themselves after a break. So we all know that bones break and they can break in a couple of different ways. Um, and one type of break is called a green stick fracture. This is when there's only a partial break and the break doesn't go all the way through the bone. Kind of breaks just like a small, you know, like um, living twig on a tree would break. Um, these are common in children because their bones are so flexible, right? Um, another type of bone or another type of break that you'll come across is called a spiral fracture. This is when a bone experiences twisting forces like, I don't know, uh, um, an athlete on a field like a soccer player, basketball player, when they try to change direction that causes the bone to twist really uh, violently and, and bones, that's just a hard kind of force for bones to deal with. And so the bones will twist and um, causes a spiral fracture. A commun comminuted fracture is when you'll have a bone that breaks into two or three pieces, uh, two or more pieces during a break. Uh, this is commonly in the elderly when they have brittle bones or just during very uh, severe fractures in which the bone just kind of breaks into multiple pieces. Um, another type of, of fracture is called a depression fracture. This is common in the bones, the flat bones of the skull. Um, which, you know, if there's you know, uh, like a blunt object hits the skull really hardly, then you'll have like almost like a crater that forms in the, in the skull, which as you can imagine, would be really damaging to the underlying uh, brain tissue. Um, um, another type of, of fracture that you might come across is called a, a growth, growth plate fracture. Um, this is when the bone breaks right on the epiphyseal plate um, in growing kids. And this is really could be a problematic fracture. Um, a lot of times those types of breaks will require a, a, a pediatric orthopedist to make sure that the, um, that the bone is repaired uh, correctly so that the, the growth plate isn't compromised. Um, finally, you can get a compound fracture. This is when the bone breaks and actually pierces through the skin. So you'll have a, kind of a bone protruding uh, outside of the body. This is especially problematic because now you could potentially introduce bacteria um, and germs into, into the, the break, whereas when the bone stays within the skin, that barrier of the skin is, isn't compromised. So compound fracture is going to be really problematic because then you're dealing with not only the break, but a large laceration and a larger potential for, um, for infection. Okay. When bones uh, break, they do heal, right? So they have a really great ability to heal. And um, it's really important that the bones after a break are, are set properly because, um, gosh, there was this one case where there was an elderly woman, she was bedridden, she had broken her femur and nobody knew because she was just um, in poor health anyways and, and was not walking around. Well, her femur broke and it grew back together. So I guess her femur, you know, the femur kind of looks like this, right? And so the femur, right, this is, you know, just a typical femur. So her femur had broken, and what it had caused is it caused the lower part of the femur to be kind of positioned like this, right, in her leg. Well, nobody knew that her, her bone was broken, and I healed. It healed in this position. So the bone body has a great ability to heal after a fracture, and so her femur ended up looking like this, and they found this out later, and they had no clue that her bone was even broken. So anyways, let's talk about the different steps that the bone takes um, after a break in order to repair itself. Here, I'm just gonna draw a typical, I don't know, long bone here, right? So here's just a typical long bone. This would be, I don't know, a pretty bad picture of the humerus, but we'll just go with it. And so here you have the humerus, all right? And let's imagine that a break occurs right here. So a nice clean break where you get a complete separation of the two bones between you know the proximal and distal end. The first thing that's gonna happen is this guy's gonna bleed a lot. I mean, if you think about all those blood vessels that are in bone, uh, those blood vessels are gonna be broken or compromised and that's gonna cause a lot of blood to kind of um, to, to come out of the bone. This is gonna cause a hematoma, which is just a fancy word for a bruise, right? That blood's gonna clot eventually, but you're going to have this, a large kind of section of clotted blood. All right. The second kind of stage that happens is that you're going to have some um, blood vessels that are going to start invading this area. Well, let me just kind of draw this out using a different color. So you'll have these blood vessels that will start to invade 
right, the area of this hematoma, this, these blood vessels will carry macrophages. And these macrophages are going to start to engulf and clean up all the like little broken pieces of broken bone and debris that's going to be located in that area. So the macrophages come in through the new blood vessels. They start to clean up all the broken pieces of bone. Next thing that will happen is you'll have fibroblasts, which are just special cells that secrete connective tissue. These guys are going to start secreting a bunch of collagen fibers. You'll also have some chondroblasts, which secrete collagen, that start secreting more collagen tissue. So you're going to have a bunch of collagen being laid down, a bunch of um, cartilage tissue that's being laid down, and this is going to produce what's called the soft callus. I'm going to kind of draw that over here. So I'm going to redraw the break, which is right here right here all right now we have all these blood vessels again and what is going on is that it's been cleaned up by the macrophages and now we're going to have a bunch of collagen and cartilage that's being laid down that connects the two broken ends of the bone this is called the soft callus and this um, soft callus is the first step in just kind of rejoining the two ends of the bones. At the same time, you're gonna have some new um, osteoblasts that are gonna start making some spongy bone right here in the middle of the soft callus. So you'll have some spongy bone right here in the middle too. The osteoblasts continue to make more and more and more of this spongy bone until finally, what'll happen is that the soft callus turns into a hard callus. And this hard callus consists of a bunch of new spongy bone tissue, right, that has kind of merged the gap between those uh, two broken ends. You have the soft callus, the hard callus, and then after the hard callus is formed, you'll have bone remodeling. What this bone remodeling does is that it just makes sure that the structure of this repaired site is nearly identical to the structure of the rest of the bone. So then this, after bone remodeling, you'll have uh, a bone that essentially looks very similar to the unbroken bone. It just might be a little bit wider around the original site of, of the break. All right. And, um, you know, this whole process takes a few months to complete, and, but the bone remodeling will, con will continue for months um, after, the, uh, after the cast comes off. So that's a quick little overview of bone um, repair and the different types of bone breaks.